Gold losing about $21 to hover around $1,712 an ounce. Well, tonight we head to Parliament where the House has approved the nomination of Ken Foyata as Minister responsible for Finance. This comes after the Appointments Committee by consensus recommended his approval to the House. Now, debating the report of the committee, several MPs from the minority side raised reservations over the responses of the minister-designate when he appeared before the vetting committee. Uh, parliamentary correspondent Chrissy Parker-Wilson joins me uh, with, uh, with more on that story. So what exactly about the finance minister-designate's responses was the minority side of the House not happy about? Well, so if you listen carefully to the minority leader, that's Tyrone Ibisu, he was not satisfied with the answer provided by the minister with regards to how GRA recruited McKenzie as a revenue collector agency to, I mean, to generate revenue for, for GRA. And he believes that there was a breach of the procurement laws. And as a matter of fact, the, he and his side are insisting that the minister provide further details of how it settled on McKenzie as the revenue collector because in the view of the minority there are a number of agencies here in ghana uh, who have the competence and the capabilities to equally execute the uh, mandate or perhaps carry out the functions that mckenzie is currently executing and so they do not understand why that should be the case again there were concerns about the recruitment of data bank staff to the finance ministry. The minority leader, Harun Ayodhisi, again, says that uh, he doesn't understand why that should happen. So they want to know the, the terms of agreement or the contract between the staff of Data Bank and the health uh, and the finance ministry, because they suspect that there was some dubious uh, recruitment that went on at the time that uh, Mr. Kenneth Farato was, was recruiting these individuals. So these were the major concerns mm. raised by the, the minority that have an idea. But And it's also worthy to note that uh, when he made those pronouncements, the majority leader himself was the chairman who was in the House, and he pleaded with his colleagues on the other side to approve the nomination of Kenneth Farato as the finance minister and indicated that if there are concerns, the minister will be made to uh, provide the necessary details and every uh, information that the minority uh, wants uh, with regards to his function as a minister. And so he pleaded with the speaker to put the question. And that was when the speaker put the question. And the uh, eyes had it, that by voice votes, and, mm -hmm. the, and the House approved him as the finance minister. And, and just to note, it was, the approval was without the drama uh, we had seen in previous times when the House had to vote over uh, some of the nominees, right? I think the expectations of most Ghanaians, and of course, even with the journalists here, uh, were doubts because we were expecting some drama, some controversy, uh, considering the fact that Kenneth Ferreira has been the only minister designate who has been vetted for two days. That is unprecedented. So uh, many of us thought that, well, um, the report, one, uh, will be subjected to secret voting. Mm. The minority definitely uh, would kick against the approval, but that didn't happen. Unfortunately, it was very smooth. The question was put. Um, those in favor say aye. Then could hear a loud voice say aye. Uh, those who are not in favor say no very silent in, in the House, I mean, <laughs> on the floor of Parliament. So the Speaker, um, Joe Sewusu, who at the time was sitting in the Speaker's chair, I mean, he's the first Deputy Speaker, uh, ruled that, well, Mr. Kenneth Ferreira now has been approved as the uh, Finance Minister. So it was a very smooth exercise, uh, Darren. All right. And you can anticipate why we're expecting some drama, uh, some drama somewhat because of uh, a JAPA deal because of uh, the right. new taxes and uh, our rising debt situation. Services. Right. And, and not to mix uh, uh, business with politics, but I'm just seeing a statement from the NDC urging uh, come on the right. consensus recommendation by uh, on, and, on Ken Oforiata. And, and Daryl, I have the statement with me right here. Now, if you look at the composition of the statement, this statement was expected to be out in the morning. 
but it appears that it delayed because if you read the caption, it says that NDC edges come on consensus recommendation of Kenoferiata. Now, the body says that it is hereby announced to the rank and file of the party and to the notice of all comrades that a decision by the appointment committee to recommend Kenoferiata for the approval by consensus will be made public today in Parliament. But as we speak, the, uh, Mr. Kenoferiata has already been, been approved by the House. So the statement is a bit of a delay. Uh, I checked with my sources within the NDC camp, and I was told that, yes, in fact, it was the intention to release the statement to the public in the morning, but I don't know why it delayed to the media around this time. So uh, even though the impact that they want, um, they won't get it, but at the end of the day, they want to communicate to the rank and file that uh, they need to remain calm because the leadership of the party, including the minority leadership here in parliament, know what they're doing. All right, Chrissy Parker Wilson there. Thanks very much for the update. We appreciate it. Joining me is um, Head of Financial Advisory at Deloitte Ghana, Yao Latte, uh, to discuss this further. Yao, no surprises, right? So I think, um, to be fair, the Minister of Finance has gone through uh, a lot to get to this point. So uh, some of the questions that were posed to him were not surprises to us. We expected them to be asked. Uh, covering the financial cleanup uh, mm. and all the issues around the Japa and um, taxes and then contracts that have been awarded to related parties or related entities. Um, and for the first time, I guess for the first time, you have the minister who was vetted on two, in two days. And so a lot has gone in, and I guess the minister also provided some necessary documents to allow for some uh, form of consensus building ahead of uh, the final approval today. Mm. So what do you think the next four years is going to look like uh, for our economy with Ken Ophoriata in charge? Yeah, so I think uh, if you look at the target that has been set by government, uh, as we look at the main targets or the major macroeconomic indicators, we are looking at going to a deficit of less than 5%, which the law mandates us to get to by the end of 2024. So we are not even seeing the deficit going below the fiscal responsibility gap of 5% anytime soon. So that is a difficult one, particularly in the year 2021, when we are where we are in now, we expect to end the year at a deficit of 9.5%. That is uh, not too ambitious, but it's going to be difficult because we are going through uh, the challenges or the adverse effects of the pandemic. Mm. And so government has had to take some hard decisions, including increases in taxes, particularly indirect taxes, which we know are likely to have uh, the impact on businesses. So there's going to be increases in goods, the price of goods and services. And if you are not careful, some unintended consequences would arise. We've also had instances where some taxes have been introduced, particularly uh, for the banking sector, for instance, where we are having profit before tax increased by a five percentage point uh, over and above what was what used to be there, the national uh, stabilization levy of five percent. So we have the banking community also complain about that. So I, I know that it's going to be it's not going to be a smooth uh, year mm. uh, because, like the minister himself rightly said, if you are a finance minister and you are liked by the people, then you're probably not doing your work. <laughs> so we expect the minister to take the hard decisions, be able to explain to all the stakeholders that are affected by some of these hard decisions, and then stand by them. Also, maybe we will advise the minister that as they take the hard decision, they should also uh, give some opportunity and take some concerns that have been raised by stakeholders. Uh, for instance, the banking sector, uh, the banking community is very worried because we've signed on to after to be competitive. You can't have a banking industry that is uh, being taxed at about 35% when other countries in Africa have banks that are being uh, taxed at less than 25%. That doesn't make our banking sector competitive. In the same way, the taxes that have been introduced, does it make our businesses competitive enough to take uh, advantage of the opportunity that is offered by after? Mm. If the taxes are going to increase the price of goods and services in Ghana, then in the AFTA community or the Africa continental free trade area communities that we have joined now, our goals in terms of price will not be competitive. So I think these are some of the considerations that the minister will have to look at 
and then take into consideration some of the concerns that have been raised. If there's a need to review the taxes, they have to review them. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you um, how confident you are about his ability to, I mean, get us to recover from the impact of COVID-19. Yeah, so I think uh, to be fair to the minister, there were some hard decisions that needed to be taken and they, they did take them. So for instance, the banking sector cleanup, there was clear evidence that uh, there were challenges in the banking sector and the minister uh, through the government entirely took the decision to uh, uh, stand by what they wanted to do. And today there's confidence in the banking sector to be fair to government. Mm. But I think what is important is whilst we are taking those hard decisions, we should also be mindful of some of the concerns that have been raised by stakeholders. So we avoid the unintended consequences. Clearly, the banking sector cleanup was in, uh, important and necessary, but there has been some unintended consequences. And today, banks that are, were doing well, that did not go through all the challenges, have had to pay or they are going to suffer that because the taxes that have been levied on banks, they are supposed to help us pay the debt that have been created by the banking sector cleanup. I think we should be able to avoid that, some of these unintended consequences for the mm. hard decision that we take. If government is going to take any decisions similar to what has been taken in the past, we expect this, uh, the government to take into consideration concerns that have been raised by stakeholders. A very good example is what we have on the table at Japan, which the minister has intimate, intimated that it will come back to parliament. We expect some of the concerns that have been raised by stakeholders to be taken into account in reviewing the entire agreement if necessary. The same for other policies and programs that the government has planned, uh, reviewing the road, uh, the uh, toll road or road tolls in Ghana. We, we know that when tolls go up, they have some unintended consequences as well. So if all of these are taken into account, when we do take such decisions, we avoid some of the adverse consequences which eventually come to affect the economy and they could become counterproductive if care is not taken. Mm. Uh, final one. This week, Ken of Realta is leading the fundraising for the $5 billion euro bond, and um, some analysts are confident government will secure the funds at a favorable interest rate. What do you anticipate? Yeah, so I think uh, historically, because of our uh, political stability that we've enjoyed and some level of macroeconomic stability, we have had oversubscription when we do go to the market. And so uh, the positive gains that have been recorded over the last few years uh, has helped us to get some good gains for any time we go to the market. Mm. But the question now is whether we are still, or our macroeconomic fundamentals are strong enough to get us interest rate that is competitive. The last time we went to the market, our long dated bond, which is 40 years, the first time in Sub-Saharan Africa, came in at about 8.8, 8.9% interest rate, which uh, was relatively higher. What we are asking government to do is that if it, it's possible to uh, wait on some of aspects of the bond uh, until we get some of things, some of the uh, macroeconomic in indicators improve, it will be better because if you go to the market and you are going to pay interest rate that is relatively expensive, they will add to our debt burden, they will add to our interest commitments. And as we know this year, for the first time in so many years I, uh, that I can remember, interest payment is our number one significant payment next uh, before compensation. And right. so if we go to capital markets and we are going to borrow at expensive rates, our interest commitment is going to increase and we are going to have a worrying situation. Thank you so much for squeezing us into your schedule. I know you had a meeting around this time. Thanks very much, Yalate. I appreciate it. Talk to you sometime soon.